Good day everyone. Today on the bench I'm going to tie you up Peking Caddis. It's a Case Caddis invitation at uh, for the bottom of your lakes. I'm going to recommend this fly to a lot of still water anglers. If you're noticing a lot of lakes, of course it'll hold caddis flies. Uh, this is a cased caddis that is crawling along the bottom. The case builders that the little larvae are inside and they're ready to uh, crawl out become free swimmers and come up the top, become a pupa and then an adult and hatch. So you want to be in there pre, pre hatch conditions or even when they are hatching you can be down on the bottom with this fly. So let's go with the materials that you need to tie the fly. Start I'm going to use some uh, 40 pound uh, monofilament just put my beads on. The glass beads I'm going to use some killer caddis uh, glass beads or you can get craft beads whatever you like. Uh, nice bright green. Uh, for the legs in the back here, I'm going to use uh, some partridge hackle and for the body It's simply deer hair. You can use You want to make sure you're selecting some deer hair. It's got a little coarse Texture to it. You don't want it too fine. It won't spin. Here's some caribou That's nice as well. Here's some deer belly hair. This is uh, there's some really soft, nice green coloration, which green is good when you're trying to match the bottom colors. Here's a contrasting black, grays. Basically what you want to do is match the conditions of the bottom of your lake because these caddis are going to utilize whatever materials are at the bottom of your lake to build their cases out of. So that's where you want to match up. I'm going to use a 1710 number 10. This is a 2x long uh, size 10 hook, it's got a good wide gape on it, and I'm not going to weight this fly. If I was to fish it on the rivers, I would wait to put a bead on the front to get it down a little better and drift it along on the rocks. But the bottom of the lakes, we're just going to hand twist it on the bottom very slowly, and it is a very effective fly. So, what we're going to do is grab a little, we'll start our thread on our hook shank, of course, get a build of uh, an area to build our fly on. I'm going to take some of my monofilament. Just flare the end here with a torch. That'll stop the beads from rolling off. You can go in here. Depends on the size. You can tie these smaller. Uh, some are the big sedges. Uh, some are the smaller uh, caddis. There's so many different uh, sizes and types of caddis out there. There's about no end to it. Make sure you're getting samples or find somebody. I know i uh, seen a fellow that killed some fish. He, he, he kept some samples for me and gave me the stomach contents and I could see that they were just plum chocker full of uh, these case caddis. And I've been on a lot of lakes where the case caddis is really really the deal and, and you got to be having these in your arsenal as well or these fish actually key in on some of this food source when they're when they're available and it seems like they like a diet something different okay so I got a four beads on there glass beads and uh, just lash it down I got a good uh, thread base I'm going to go into my partridge hackle here go to the back get some webby webby hackle I want to make sure I got enough there to give me some nice legs here's a nice feather right here Pull that one out. Color I don't think will matter on the legs too much. And uh, we'll just take some of this webby material off the bottom, this hackle. And I'm going to uh, tie it in by the tip. Just ahead of the beads. You can wrap that tip down, not a big deal. And um, I'll, I'll bring in my little hackle player. I like using these clip players when I'm using uh, partridge. I can hold the stem exactly where I want it. I'm actually ahead of the the beads a little bit because this hackle is a little longer than I'd like it. So when I tie it back, you'll see when I pull it back around the beads, it's going to shorten it up a little bit. So I'm going to come back here now just ahead of the beads with my 
thread right at the rear and basically I just want to envelope the those beads with the legs. A nice soft hackle there too, it's going to breathe. Fish will see that kind of wiggling down there. These, That's what they're looking at. This is that, that They key in on that. I've seen this fly tied with uh, pearl core braid too, the, the green pearl core braid. That looks good too. So if you don't have the uh, the beads and you want to do that, that's a good option. So let's come in here. We're going to do a couple colors. I like to make get a little bit of a mottled appearance. So I'm going to come in here and take a little pinch of my, my natural hair. I'm going to take a little pinch of my black. And I'll take a little pinch of olive. Make sure you clean the underfur out. Then I'm just going to kind of blend and mix them in my hand a little bit so they're not so the colors get mixed up. So it looks more mottled. And then I'm going to come in here. It's not a tight body at all. We just basically want to make it look like some junk that they put the their cat. Now I'm just going to take a soft loop and a half. Turn the half on there. Then when I pull it down, it should flare out nicely. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Kind of a drab looking color, isn't it? That's what we want. Something that'll match the bottom. If I was fishing just on a marl or a uh, sandy bottom lake, well then we go with you know the different natural colors, right? The tans and so forth. In a mixed environment, who knows what they might use down there. Your little caddis just build their little homes where they live. They just stick together whatever they can find for materials and that's what they live in, that little house they created. So we're just going to repeat the process. Get a few colors, make sure that bottom under fur is gone. A couple of little soft turns. Wrap it up. Nothing fancy here at all. This this looks pretty pretty wild. Okay. And we'll come in here with some more. I'm just I can change the colors however. You, you can use your imagination, but always uh, Try to try to wrap a few different ones up. I mean, if you fish a lot of the same lakes all the time, you're going to get you're dialed into your colors pretty quick. You'll know which ones they want, which ones they don't. You fish a lot of different waters. And I like to have as many bases covered as I can. You can be surprised how many flies you take with you, and be surprised what you don't have some days. And we just finish the body up that way. I've got a lot of color in there. I'm going to pull this back behind the eye, half hitch, whip finish that off. There we go. Now the thing is with hair, what a mess. Now we got to trim it up. So basically I'm just going to start rotating my vise here. You can take it out and do it by hand too, it's a good way of doing it. Just trim it off a little at a time. Get to the back here, just a little bit careful. You don't get rid of all your partridge, your legs. Don't trim them off. And just keep playing with it. Just take your time trimming deer hair. It's always, that's a key with deer hair all the time is take a little bit of, take a little bit of time. This doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be a perfect shape because they're, they're using whatever materials down on the the lake bottom, as I say, to create their their little cocoons, little house. Case caddis, and that is pretty much it right there. That's nothing nothing fancy. You wouldn't want to hang that on the wall or anything for a display fly, but it is a really good producer. And I'd really recommend uh, folks that you get a few of these wrapped up and uh, get them on the water with you. And you can tie them in different sizes. You can maybe tie them right down to almost half that size. And if you're going to the big sedges, you can even go almost uh, half again as big. So, um, all the best with you on that one. That's the um, Peking Caddis. I'm not sure the, uh, the originator of this fly, but it's a, it's a really, really good uh, proven pattern that you'll want to have on your lakes. Have a great day. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sf.com 
otf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.